So I just casted the line out and the line is taut. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna gauge the bait switch right here. Now listen, there, I just clicked it, which means that now it's on the secondary drag system instead of the main one. So this way, whatever will grab the bait, it will run and, and hoping not feel any resistance. And when I flick this back up, I'm getting full power back to the, the reel and we'll see what happens, all right? Aloha YouTubers, this is Scuba Chris. This is the new Coronado CDX80. Now this model here has been out for, I guess a couple of years. Uh, last year I introduced its baby brother, the CDX65. That was a monster of a reel. I mean, it handled everything from small sharks uh, up to big stingrays. And this one just dwarfs it by a mile. This one's called the CDX80. It's the next step above the 65. Now, way back when, I, I first tried the Trios, which was an older version that I got from Sports Authority. And then um, I got in touch with Jeff Robles Associates, Jeff, I'm sorry, Jeff Robles Associates, and their top salesman, who was Robert Daguyan, recommended this model. So I tried the 65, I loved it. So I, I tried to go up and, and I just got it in. This is the 80. This is a monster of a reel. Looking at the box stats, pretty impressive actually. Bearings, four plus one, four um, high performance bearings plus one roller bearing. Gear ratio is 4.9 to one. Line retrieve, 45.4 inches. Um, the weight of this unit is 30.1 ounces. So it's only 1.1 ounces heavier than, than the 65 unit. And the max drag is 37.5 pounds. Now for line capacity, it's rated for 405 yards of 20 pound mono. Now that's amazing. Now 20 pound mono has a line diameter of 0 0.41. Just so happens my soft steel eminent braid is 0 0.41 line diameter. So guess what I'm going to use? Okay, let's see what we got here. Um, you got your paperwork. Comes with a parts list. In, uh, instructions on how to use the unit. Okay, you got your your handle with your ergo grip, which is good for um, salt water applications. Man, this. I thought the 65 was big. Man, <laughs> this one puts it to shame, actually. Packed really well, as you can see. Wow. Look at the size. No joke. Look at the size of this. Wow. This is really something. Okay, so this is right hand, left hand application. Okay, you got a little protector for the threads here from the handle. Pull the pull this off. Now when you everything is starting to blow away. Just remember, I mean, normally when we screw things on, we, we go clockwise. But for real, you have to do it counterclockwise. So we're going to put this on for uh, right hand operation. Notice it's spinning counterclockwise. Give it a quick wrist turn. There you go. But I'm right handed, so you know your right hand is going to hold on to the base, your foot base. You power it up so you can crank down, power it up crank down so right now this is set up for right hand application and as many of you already know the, the number one thing that first um, brought me to Okuma that I've noticed many many years before they even contacted me was the unusual thick bell wire the bell wire on these things are just amazing I mean back in the day I remember going out and I'm not gonna say what brands but some naturally recognized brands I used to go out um, off the lava flows from the Taipus throw out my line for the small jacks, whatever I could. And sometimes if your reels were sitting atop a rock or sitting atop a cooler and it fell, it would, the, the bell wires back then was so thin that it would bend when it falls and you have to take it in. I don't think you're gonna have a problem with these things. Look at those massive bell wires. Okay, comes with the anti-reverse switch over here. All right, so right now, see so you can't go either way. 
So it has four high performance ball bearings, one roller bearing. The roller bearing is for this one here. See that? Now, now that engage the anti-reverse, it won't back up anymore. Now, anti-reverse was the way a lot of old timers used to fish, uh, live baiting, um, especially off boats. But nowadays, we really don't need that. Now, this here has a, if this is a bait feeder. Okay, what is a bait feeder? The bait feeder means is that when you toss your line out, if it's a bait or um, a live bait, dead bait, that you want the fish to grab the bait, run with it, it's going to be in its mouth, then it's going to slowly go down its throat, and then he's going to swallow the bait. Bait feeder means is that you're going to give the fish time to do that before you set the hook, okay? It's giving you that option. Whereas another, any other type of reel, you already set the drag, and as soon as it, 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 the hook digs in, that's it. it battle on, okay? So a bait feeder is a very unique type of style of, of spinning reel. So what you do is, okay, you, you throw out your, your, your baited hook, okay? Set your drag, tension to whatever you feel is necessary. And you set your, your rig, hopefully in a spike, PVC tube. So what, what you do is that in the back here, you're gonna have the bait feeder function, see that? So when you flick this like that, what you just did by flicking this down is that you negated the main drag. You just disconnected the main um, drag system here and you engaged the, the micro precision drag in the back. That's why the, the thing's a little heavy because it has a secondary system in the back. Now you have this little micro adjustment knob here. See that? So you can turn it to the right to to make it a little bit tighter or to the, to the left to make it a little looser. But you know this is only like maybe a half pound to a, a pound point two I think in terms of um, weight tension. So what happens is that even though you, you, you turn this the fish will grab the bait and run and he's not going to know he's been hooked so he's going to go hmm, hmm, hmm. he's going to go along thinking everything's okay so when you i usually give it about six to eight seconds after the tip comes down and shows that i have something running with the bait now you can do it a little different but after my six to eight seconds i boom i flip the switch now what is that going to do so let's bring it back now we when you turn the handle, see the te the handle here? Now, what's go watch what's gonna happen. See, it flicked back on its own. I'll put it back again. So when you turn the handle, as soon as you turn the handle, see that? It's gonna engage the system. Now you can manually come and just go like that, but most people will generally just pick it up. I'm right-handed, so you just pick it up and as soon as everything starts to run, click. See? That is what the secondary system here is for. This is what is known as a bait feeder system. Okay, on the Coronado bait feeder. I already got my set pull on this. Alrighty. So, how about the bait feeder function? Alright. If you... Right now, it's locked up into, into this system. See what it is? I just flicked it down. So now it's on the bait feeder system. Alrighty. So you have a knob here. See? You make this as tight or as loose as you want. That'll, that'll control how much tension you're giving it. See? So... Gonna give it fairly tight down here, which means they're just oh, that's a little too tight. I'll loosen up just a hair bit more. Perfect. Now this has a DFD. See it right here. See it says DFD. That's known as a dual four strike system, like the Azores. So what happens is in your um. 
in your top part of your spool here, it has washers on the top to um, this washers at the bottom and it sandwiches everything together. So instead of the old style where you just have um, washers or drags on one side or the other, it's dual force. So when you cinch down on your knob here, it's squeezing everything together to create friction and that will slow down the run. You know, say you, you do have something big because, you know, with the smaller one, the little bit smaller ones, the 65 unit, I did on its first day out, you catch a large stingray, about maybe 40, 44 pound stingray. Now, instead of using the drag system here, you keep tightening it, tightening it to slow it down. It will slow it down, but it's also going to wear down your drag system. So what I do is I keep it to a normal level where um, the fish would tire itself out. Now. That way, it's still fighting the drag system, but not 100%. What I found works better is the position of your rod. Now, say for example, if you're going straight up, that means the rod's going at a 90 degree angle. That's called high sticking. That's bad because you can actually snap your tip off or break your rod. That's the worst thing you can do. You also don't want to put it down horizontal like this because you're not putting any pressure on the fish. What you want to do is go up at a 45 degree angle. Between the 90 and the zero, you want to go like this. Cut it in half, 45 degree angle. You want to hold onto this at the 45 degree angle. So the rod is exactly like this at, see that, at 45 degrees. And you want to put roughly about 10, uh, depending on the size of the fish, maybe 10 pounds of constant pressure. Just play around with this until you realize that the fish is starting to struggle. That's what you should leave it at. Let the fish tire itself out. Don't do the work. Let, let the, your equipment do all the work for you. And I guarantee you that you can bring in some big fish by letting it tire out that way. Now, if you try to prematurely jerk the fish in by uh, using force in this, not only can you do harm to your gear, but you're going to make the fish do something that it's not meant to do. Say the fish, you catch a GT and it's running, all right? You some It's going to keep running until it it naturally tires out and you can bring it in because it's fighting your gear now if you try to force the head to make it do something it's not supposed to it might dig into the reef or do or maybe twirl around a, a piece of obstruction you don't want that so just trust me just do it the way i explained at the 45 degree angle you'll be fine now a lot of the uh, more recent um okuma reels has a uh, cyclonic flow rotor cfr that is this thing right here you notice that how it's shaped it's like fan blades right you're going to notice this on very good exceptional spinning wheels what it does see that and the faster you spin you spin it i can feel it right now you can feel the, the it's like a fan you can feel the breeze it's like invisible water air pushing back now what that does it helps keep the internals inside here, the internals dry so no water intrusion and it also sets up a shield of air around it so whatever spray is coming at it, it's going to deflect it away. Cyclonic flow rotor. These really work. Also CRC, corrosion resistant coating. Now this reel has been coated, so it's going to resist uh, a lot of the salt water, salt water intrusion. But it's still good to slightly rinse it off. I mean, don't, don't get your holes, hit it hard and bury all that salt in there. Just get a nice spray, spray it out. Like what I do is I, I take my rig up to the shower, end of the day, nice warm water, put in shower, uh, just let it sprinkle over, and the next day, it's fine. Uh, you might laugh at that, but none of my gear has ever been um, damaged by salt corrosion. It's, it's lasted this long. Also, even though this is not a long casting spinner, it acts like one. The line is compacted. It has a line layering system so you watch the oscillation here look how long it takes for that spool to go up and down up and down see how long it's taking it's not going up and down real fast what it's doing is layering the line next to each other very tightly compact so what that what's that's going to do is going to um, help you hold more line on your spool and it's going to enable you to cast your lines farther out this also has a line keeper. See that right here? So you can twirl your loose line around that.
Also, what I found when you use bait feeders, uh, the hooks are very important. I don't want to use circle hooks. Circle hooks are arranged so when you get a hit, you, you have to jerk it so the hook in its mouth will go along to the edges of the mouth to hook into it. That's what a circle hook was designed for it and it was made that way. Now a J-hook, a J-hook will hook in whenever you um, put pressure on the bait. So when, as soon as you jerk it, it will dig in. So I prefer J-hooks when I'm using bait feeders because you don't know where that bait is. It could be in the mouth, it could be in the throat. So um, as soon as you jerk it, that's where the hook's going to lodge in. So stick to J-hooks when you use any type of bait feeder. So this unit has a hydro block seal. Now the hydro block seal is, is like a rubberized washer system with rubberized gasket to prevent water from going into your drag system. It's not something like the Makairo spinner where you can actually put it under water and leave it there for hours and keep turning it and the water get in. Um, after time, water will get into into this. But in terms of like a, um, a little rainstorm or just some water spray coming onto your reel, it's more than enough. And I'll show you what that is. Because the more you tighten this, the, uh, it, the drier it, it keeps everything. And I'll show you the reason why. See right there, look at that. That's a rubber gasket seal around here. So what happens is that because it, it puts the pressure on top of your spool, right? The more pressure on it, it, it's going to, the rubber is going to seal around it tighter and keep everything drier. Okay, let's go spool some eminent braid on this. Now, I really don't need to put on over 400 yards of line. I'm going to put a little bit less so I have a little bit more um, space on the top part. All right. Yeah, I'm going to stop. It's not quite an eighth of an inch almost, but I'm going to stop because it's almost up to the edge of the limb. So I put in 328 meters of line.